you go, Barbara Jean. So, are you all set? Yes, well. Isn't he going to miss me? Miss you? Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? He's going to miss Uncle Frisco, the human dumping ground. Get more food in my lap than she ever got in her hey. stomach. I just think how much she'll save on dry cleaning. What time do you have to go to work? I'm not. I took the day off. Really? Yeah. It's occasion. I thought it'd be a good day to show that housekeeper the ropes. Oh, man. You think she's going to work out, Santa's yeah, mother? I hope so. She doesn't do kids, you know? Well, tell her that she can forget the windows if she'll take care of Barbara Jean. Oh, we'll manage. You guys want some coffee? No, I don't. No, thanks. Tony, would you like some? Sure. <laughs> I hate leaving Tony like this. Well, it was his idea. No, but I can't help thinking we're deserting him. If he wanted us to stay, sweetheart, he would ask us. I wonder. He thinks he's probably imposing on us. He's probably happy to get us out of his hair. I know, but I'd like to know what he's going to do with Barbara Jean. Who's going to take care of Barbara Jean? <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, oh, I doubt that. Sweetheart. You may not miss me, but I'm sure going to miss you. Oh, how quickly they forget. What? Well, you don't remember how this sweet, lovely little child in this wonderful house drove you crazy? Mm -hmm. I won't miss that. No. Well, I'll do my best to uh, <clears throat> wear you out at the brownstone. Do you think we'll ever have one of our own? Yeah, when well, we're ready. That's one of the good points of moving back to the brownstone. What? Well, Tony was right. You know, in the long run, it's better for us. We can get on with our lives and do what we want to do. But what about Tony? Well, honey, we can't prop him up forever. Now, sooner or later, he's going to have to take on the responsibility of managing this big house and raising his little daughter. And it's going to start the minute we walk out of that door. You think he's up to it? Up to what? Well, managing this place without us. I mean, it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, we're indispensable, and this place is going to be pretty paralyzed without us. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to write. <laughs> you know, it is going to be strange without you guys. This place was starting to feel like home. You know, just when things were starting to settle down, we have to leave. Settle, settle down. down? I practically had to pry the two of you off each other's throats. You were walking out on me the other day. You call that a stable relationship? Yeah, but now we're walking out on Tony. You know, it's going to be one of those things where we'll see each other more than we ever did. Don't be a stranger, okay? B.J. and I'll camp on the brownstone steps, okay? It is going to be a little different squeezing into that little apartment after we're used to this great big house here. Well, I guess we'll just have to be all over each other, won't we? Mm-hmm. If you call, the phone might be off the hook. It'll give us some time to spend a little uh, company acquaintances with Jake and Bobby and everybody else at the brownstone. First, could you leave my coat upstairs? Yeah, I think I might have. Um, I think I'll go get it. I'll be right back. What's up? Oh, Jake is going to represent Corey Blythe. He what? He's going to take that hit and run case. Why? Guess you're going to have to ask him yourself. Maybe it's uh, <sighs> the same reason I operated on the kid. Tom asked me the other day about a lawyer. I said, Jake was the best one in town. But I had no idea that he'd take this case. I mean, that's Tanya's kid. I just want to forget this accident ever happened. Well, obviously, Jake doesn't want to. Don't tell me you two are fighting now. No, but Mr. Meyer and myself might have a little run-in pretty soon. Jake? Why? He's defending Corey Blythe. Why would he? I guess the most important thing to Jake is a case. Obviously not his friend. Hello, Bobby. Hi, Camelia. What's happening in the psych ward? Oh, well, everybody's talking about Corey. Uh, he's really lucky that Jake agreed to take his case. Jake what? You don't know? I mean, Jake is taking the hit-and-run case. Oh, I had no idea. Well, Corey needs all the help he can get. I mean, Jake is going to have his hands full. You can say that again. Well, i, I got to go run some errands. I'll see you later. Bye. Goodbye, sweetheart. My husband has done it again. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. Well, I'm not either, but I can't help wondering what's going to happen when the Jones boys find out. I'm afraid blood will be thicker than the ink on the indictment. Jake's business card ought to read, Have Underdog Will Defend. He's never met odds that he wouldn't fight. Well, what are you going to say about a man who risks everything for principle? 
Mm. I hope Tony feels the same way. He operated on the boy. True. However, Frisco is determined to put Corey in jail and to throw away the key. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you. <laughs> well, it looks the same. It smells a little funny. Well, a little airing out, it'll be as good as new. A little airing out, a little cleaning. Remind me to introduce you to Mr. Broom. Well, honey, it's springtime. Women washing the windows and cleaning and... Getting housekeepers. For this little place? You put a broom in somebody's hand and it turns into a palace. Well, you better start cracking the whip then, Your Highness. I've been slaving over a huge house for a month. The last thing I want to do is come home to my place and clean well, it. Well, then, what's the first thing you'd like to do? Hmm? You thought about that? I'd like to have a dinner party for all the brownstone people. Just what I had in mind. What better way to rejoin the Brownstone family? Yeah, well, I can tell you one person that I'm not looking too forward to entertaining. Frisco, you're going to have to face Jake sooner or later. I want an explanation. It's a good thing he wasn't around when I called before. I'd have really gone off of him. I'd like to hear exactly how he's going to justify this. And you know Jake. I might be able to talk him out of defending this kid. I don't know. He might be home. Frisco, what are we doing here? Unpacking. Trying to resume our normal lives. That was my next guess. Guess this. When was the last time that we had some real privacy? Long time. Give that man a cigar. I'd rather have you. Just what you had in mind. Mm, yeah, I think you're getting to it. Oh, well, let me see here. A little romance might be in order now, is that right? One way to find out. Let me see if I remember how to do this still. Have I told you in the last five or ten minutes how much I love you? I'm all ears. Well, that's too bad. I was hoping I could just have all... Pizza, but who wants to be disturbed at a time like this? Mm. Hmm? Come. Forgive Grab me for bringing Please. this up, but don't you have a job to go to? You, my dear, are my job today. Then just what, Detective Jones, were you investigating a short while ago? A crime of passion. Tough case. I may be on it all day. You really don't have to go to headquarters. Mm -mm. No, I tried it in a couple days. We'll make it a weekend down the road. It's worth it. I want it today to be special for you. It's been great so far. So much for privacy, huh? Should we answer it? Mm-mm. Um, maybe you should let me answer it. Um, you don't want to be seen like that. That's really not dress for company. Oh, my socks. Hi. Welcome home. Oh, it's great to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Maybe I should come back later. Uh, no, um, we're just relaxing. Come on in. Come on in. Uh, how are Tony and BJ? Oh, they're doing just fine. Uh, Sam's mother's looking after the house. Tony really doesn't know what he's going to do about the baby yet, but we have to find someone for her. Oh, well, I don't imagine he'll have any trouble finding help. I hope not. Uh, Felicia, I was just wondering if you and Frisco had heard about, uh, Jake's decision to defend Corey Blythe. Hey, landlady, how's it going? Better, now that you two are home. <laughs> Where's Jake? Out of town early this morning. Oh business? I certainly hope so. Mm. 
But his big case was here in Port Charles. You heard. Well, bad news travels fast. I haven't even talked to Jake since he made his decision. Camille's the one who told me that he decided <clears throat> to defend Corey. Well, maybe he split because he didn't want to deal with me or Tony. No. Jake always takes responsibility for his actions, whether it's convenient or not. Well, this one's going down rather hard. I can imagine. You know, I always thought that uh, Tanya meant something to Jake. She did, Frisco. Jake loved Tanya. Well, he's got a hell of a way of showing it. He was torn up over her death. Oh, so he decides to ease his grief by representing this kid. Is that it? Look, I can't speak for Jake. No, his actions speak for themselves. You know, by representing this kid, it's like spitting in his friend's face. You know that, don't you, Bobby? Nothing less. Jake would never do that. It's, it's not justice. This is called opportunism. And the hell with the consequences. Are you saying that Jake took Corey's case to further his career? Well, if I don't look at it that way, then I'm left feeling like he doesn't care about his friends. That's not fair, Frisco, and you know it. Jake defends victims. He defends people who won't get a fair shake unless he sees to it. Victims? Jake defends victims. Well, obviously he can't defend Tanya because she's dead. She's the biggest victim of all of them. She was killed in cold blood by this kid. He sympathizes with him and he's going to represent him. Now, Tanya doesn't have to deal with that because she's not around. But Tony has to deal with that choice the rest of his life. He's the victim. Who represents Tony? Are you forgetting something? Tony operated on Corey. Tony saved Corey's life. And that was an emergency. It was his job. And he forgot the kid when he was finished. I think he just thought his friends would respect him for that. Jake can't do anything to help Tony. He might be able to do something to help Corey. Why would he do that, Bobby? Hmm? You tell me why. Because Jake's not going to say no to somebody who's in trouble. And if you have to fault him for something, then blame him for that. Well, I guess I do. Because all I see is Jake taking a knife and twisting it a little deeper inside of my brother. She got lots of exercise going up down these steps. <laughs> now, we're back to the living room, as you can see. It's pretty large, isn't it? Well, I thought it was large when Felicia showed me, but now I know my way around it. It's very manageable. Good. I hope you understand why I felt that I, I, I couldn't handle the house and the baby. Of course I do. You know, when, when Sam and her brothers were growing up, I, I never seemed to have any trouble taking care of a house and raising a family. Listen, I got one and I know how you feel. <laughs> oh, did, did you make any arrangements for BJ? Would you not worry about that? Everything is set up, okay? Excuse me. I'll, I'll, I'll just get started in the kitchen. Hi. Well, hi, Bobby. Come on in. Thanks. I can't stay, Tony. I just came by to drop off an Easter present for my namesake. Don't worry, this is not chocolate. Ooh, she's gonna love it. Thanks. My pleasure. How's she doing? She's great. She's a little angel, you know. I bet she's gonna miss having Frisco and Felicia around. Yeah, but they needed to get on with their life. We'll get by. Tony, we go back too far for me to beat around the bush on this. I know. Jake is representing Corey Bly. Tony, I am sick about it. And I just pray that none of us are gonna have to take sides on this. You and Tanya and BJ mean the world to me and to Jake. You do believe that, don't you? I tried to explain the whole situation to Frisco, and he was uh, too upset to listen. I'll talk to him. Oh, I don't expect you to do that. We both know he has a tendency to lead with his heart and not his mind when loved ones are involved. I think you just have to understand that Frisco's been working night and day trying to find Tanya's the driver of the car and it's pretty frustrating for him that that a good friend of his is trying to undo everything that he's done you know what about you you're the one who suffered the loss do you hate jake um jake didn't take tanya from me but doesn't it even bother you that he's defending the boy who did well uh, he's just doing what he has to do you know, Jake and I are professional people, and it's our job to help people. 
I saved Corey's life on the operating table. It'd be very hard for me to blame Jake for trying to save his life in the courtroom. There's one thing I've learned about taking care of Tony's house and a baby. It's that I'm really not ready for a family of my own. Not yet. Well, not that I don't want a family. It's just that I'd like to give it some time. You agree? Mm-hmm. You're not still thinking about Jake, are you? You know, I break my back for for a full month trying to find who killed Tanya. And I find the kid, and Jake runs to his rescue. Yet I feel like, why do I even bother? Take him so personally. Well, we're talking about my sister-in-law here, Felicia. I mean, it's kind of tough not to take it personally. Defense lawyers and cops have always been adversaries, at least in the courtroom. Your job is to build up a case against the suspect, and Jake's job is just to tear it down. I understand how the system works. I'm just saying that I wish the defense lawyer in this particular instance was not a friend of mine. Me too. Because then we wouldn't be spending our one and only day together talking about it. I'm sorry. I shall put my complete and utmost attention at the matter at hand. Listen, I've thought about it, and I realized I wasn't very attentive when we were staying at Tony's. I've gotten more attention from strangers. When? Your guilt trip first. Well. I realize I could have helped a little more around the house. I know you were very busy. I was swamped. Now, oh, come on, do you mind? I'm trying to apologize here. A little forgiveness would help. I'm sorry, I'm just not used to it. I'm not used to your apologies. Oh, that's it. Just twist the knife in a little deeper, huh? If I ever act like that again, you have the liberty to kick me in the conscience. If I can find it. Is there anything else I can do for you? Mm, a little romance would be nice. Well, you mean a little more romance? No, no, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about love. <laughs> One thing leads to another. Not always. In our case. Not oh, always. <laughs> Cookie. Look at this dog. Woof. Give me some of that. Give me some of that, dog girl. Mm. Oh, you know what you're supposed to do here? This is where you jump up and you run answer the door and you go, I'll get it, Dad. Go. You know something, BJ? If you can't do that, how are you ever going to say, take two aspirins, call me in the morning, it'll be $100, please. You can't just eat cookies all your life, you know? Well, good evening. Lucy. Hi, BJ. Well, hi. I didn't expect you. What are you doing here? Well, I figured you might have, might have to go to work, and I wanted to come and stay and spend the night and take care of BJ. Come here, you little sweet bee, you. Come here. Come on, let's play with Aunt Lucy. Yeah, you want to? Okay. Ooh, good crack out. Mm. Yeah. Oh, thank you. see for just a moment what it was as if Tanya was back just got back in the town this morning you be all right for me to talk to Corey again yeah I think so Camilla have you seen Corey this morning yes and I agree with you doctor there's Frisco there's please call the farm so I need to see Corey blood okay. Frisco good morning good morning you here to see Corey that's right 
I understand you have some mixed feelings about this whole situation. About you taking Corey's case? Yeah. My feelings aren't mixed at all. Uh, Bobby told me over the phone how you took the news yesterday. I always considered you a friend of the Jones family, Jake. I am, Frisco, and you know that. I don't know anything. Not when you decide to help the kid who killed my sister-in-law. Do you want some more juice? No, you have some. I will. Did BJ go, did she wake up when you took her back? No. Nope. That little girl of yours is a perfect angel. With you, with some people, she's a pain. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. Did she sleep through the night? Mm -hmm. Of course she did. So did I. The last few weeks, I have been waking up at night and I think, oh, BJ's awake, she's crying and she's not over half the time. Just glad you spent the night. Appreciate it. Now I gotta get on to this thing. On, on to what? I gotta find a nanny for BJ. I got the day off. Today's the day I gotta do it. You know, I really don't think you have to rush into that. Yes, I do. You've got five days off, all right? Now I have to do this. I've gotta get moving on it. And these employment agency references here. Tony, what, what if I applied for the job? No. Come on, I took care of Jenny Weber's baby. I did a very good job. She'd give you an excellent reference, I'm sure. I don't sure. need references. I love BJ very much. I don't doubt your sincerity for a minute. I just don't think it's the best thing for you. Tony, you don't have to say that, you know, about it not being the best thing for me. You have a good job. You have the beginnings of a career at General Hospital, and I don't want you to throw it away. And you're not thinking about the fact that taking care of a baby is a full-time job. And I want you locked up here. I think you need to get out and meet people. You need to expand your horizons. This is the time of your life when you need to do things like that. It, it's not quite. What do you mean? I'm, I'm having a baby, Tony, and I really feel like I need a safe haven, and, and I feel like it could be right here. That must be Bridie. You can't talk about this in front of her, Will you okay? promise we won't drop it later, okay? Absolutely. Coming. Hi, come on in. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Dr. Jones. Don't you think we ought to talk this thing out before it gets out of hand? You know what puzzles me, Jake? What? Is that I consider you a family member almost. That's not from living at the Brownstone. But we've been through a lot of things together. And I look up to you sometimes, just like I look up to Tony. And the feeling is mutual, Frisco. But I'm a lawyer. And the kid needs a lawyer. It's a job I have to do. You have to do it. You see? What are you telling me? You're telling me there are no other lawyers in Port Charles who could take this case? You don't quite understand, Frisco. No, you don't understand, Jake. Have you really thought about what Tony's going to go through reliving this accident, especially with you being the lawyer that's going to come down on him? Yes, no, I No, 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 wait a minute. Now, that goes for me, too. What about my feelings? What about all the people who love Tanya and know you? You know, I turned the case down at first. Well, really? Why the turnabout? The boy needs me. I'm obligated to help where I'm needed. That statue of justice is blindfolded. Corey is entitled to an attorney. His parents want me. I guess I'm just going to have to accept that. I suppose I can't ask for anything more than that. Thanks. You know, something dawned on me a little while ago. What's that? Oh, I bust my butt for about a month to put this case together, and you're going to tear the hell out of it in court. Yep. I swear to you, Jake, I'm going to see this kid behind bars. Not if I do my job right. Frisco, wait a second. Yep. Corey Blythe is still a patient. Well, there's one thing I know, Doctor, that is Corey Blythe is a patient. Here. Then just take this as a warning. If at any time I feel my patient is being put under too much stress, I'll stop the questioning. Yeah, is that right, Frisco? Well, congratulations. Don't forget I'm a detective. 
and I have my rights too, and one of those is to put a hit-and-run driver behind bars. I think what Tom is suggesting here is that if the patient starts getting overstressed, there's always tomorrow. He's not suggesting you can't question it now. Terrific. So we all know our job, right? Right. Now I'm here to get facts, okay? Okay. Right, well, Corey knows about this meeting. Good. Let's go in. Good morning, Corey. Good morning. You feel up to this? Yeah. You have counsel. I have to read you your rights before we start. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to have that attorney present, if you so choose. The next thing I want to do is question you about the day of the accident, March 17th of this year. March 17th? That's right. Tell me what you did on that day, Corey. That day... Go ahead and tell him, Corey. Oh, but the thing is, and Dr. Hardy knows this too, there's a lot I don't remember. Well, then tell me what you do remember. About the accident? That's right. Where do I start? Any place, as long as you start. I remember some talk at the breakfast table. And my dad took off for work early as usual, and um, my mother was looking up St. Patrick's Day sales in the newspaper. I, I felt funny. I, I didn't go to school. What do you mean you felt funny? I, I forget the word. Doctor, when you're not sure where you are, even though that you know you're in the kitchen, uh, disoriented? Yeah, that, that's the word. But then I felt okay again. But... What? I, I was going stir-crazy alone in the house, so... That afternoon... I, I think it was the afternoon... I thought going for a drive might help. You went driving? Yeah. What make of car? A Saab 78. That was registered to you? Yeah, I, I've got a driver's license. I know that. Was anyone else in the car with you? No. So you went driving? Where did you go? Well, I, I remember one place. Um, I had a couple errands to do. Such as? I picked up some new tapes. There's a, a new album out. What other errands? The other errands? I don't remember. I, I think I was driving downtown. I'm trying. It was like... It was like after breakfast, only this time. It hurt. I mean, it really hurt. What hurt? And I felt it before. What are you talking about? First, my arms and my hands felt numb. Like they weren't attached to me. And then my head. Oh, my head. It was like someone was tightening a steel band around my head. What was it, Corey? Great pain? It was worse than ever before. I didn't know if I was going to die or what. You still driving? It, it happened so fast. What happened, Corey? The, the car's skidding, and I can't control it. I didn't know what to do. I hear this. Thump! I hear this loud thump! I didn't... You hit Tommy I, Jones. I didn't know. I didn't know if the car was braking or accelerating. I, I didn't mean to run. I, I didn't even know what I was, I was doing in the first... But I, at first, I didn't... At first, but then you did. No. Look, come on, hold the questions. He's having trouble. Corey. 
Get the bag, Corey. He's hyperventilating. Corey, get the bag. Under his mouth and his nose. Breathe deeply, Corey. Come on, deep breath. Oh, yeah. You're going to look like he's not responsible for this, Frisco? Go down. Go down. Well, then who is? Huh? Who's responsible for my brother not having a wife and his daughter not having a mother, then? You tell me who, Jake. Hey. Hi. Um, can I take you away from that for a minute? Sure. Do you, do you want me to get you something? No. I want to talk to you for a minute. I've been uh, thinking about what you said about staying here and about making this a safe haven. Well, just until the baby's born. I want to talk to you about that, too. Come here, sit down. What, you want to talk about the baby? Yeah. I want to know if you have faced the reality of what life on the outside is going to be like for a single parent and a child. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I, um, I'm going to let Bobby and Jake uh, adopt my baby. Really? Yeah, I, I think they would make wonderful parents, don't you? Did you talk to the father about this? Yeah, I, I did, and it's all settled. I, I think it worked out perfectly. Yeah, I know they're desperate for a child. And, and I've heard that adoptive parents can be just as loving and wonderful as natural parents. They are. Why are you looking at me so funny? Because, Lucy, you just don't seem to realize what an amazing thing it is that you're doing. Some women wouldn't go through this process. You're sacrificing a lot. Did you know that? Well, it's, it's the right thing to do, so I don't know. I just... I'm doing it. Mm. It's none of my business. Wait, what? Go ahead. Well, I've seen you with my little girl, and you have a very strong maternal instinct. I do, but I think most women have that. But most women don't give their children up for adoption, either. Oh, I see. You, you want to ask me if I've really thought about how wrenching this would be for me to let go? Yes, I do. Tony, I have thought about it. And? Well, the, the way I see it is, if it's the right thing for the baby, then it's the right thing for me. All right. What? All right, what? If you want to stay here and you want to be BJ's nanny, you got it. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, we've got enough Whoa. questions for today, Frisco. I agree. Can't you see the condition the patient's in? Considering the circumstances, I don't think a little shaking up will hurt. Come on, Frisco, can't you see his condition? I can see he might be a good actor. Just take it easy, Cora. Sorry to interrupt, but there's breath, a telephone call for you. Settle um, down. I can't leave right now. I gather it's important. Um. Go ahead, Camellia. Thank you. All right, cool. If the kid has got you fooled, one more session with him. I'm pressing him as an adult to have him tried. Felony hit and run. Howdy. Well, Frisco's out for blood. You spoke with him after I left? Yeah. I can't blame him on a personal level. But I have a case to prepare. Look, I'd like you to do me a favor. Write up a statement on uh, Corey's psychological condition before and after the hit and run. Sure. I think I know one thing you're after, and I can answer it right now. I feel strongly that Corey's psychological condition wasn't caused by the accident, but was there before the accident took place. Perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Good. Now... The next statement I have to get is not going to be so easy. I have to go to Corey's other doctor, Tony Jones, and ultimately ask him to testify on behalf of the boy that killed his wife. But you'll have to have his opinion. It's going to be the most difficult request I've ever made. Sometimes it's just one way. Whoa, 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 Frisco, whoa! Hey, what's the matter? You know, Captain Lewis, when I was in the police academy, you told me we'd have bad days. Well, brother, you're right. This is one of them. All right, what's the matter? The kid's a con man, that's what he is. Along with being a murderer, he's, he's a con man, too. Who? Oh, this little punk kid, Corey Blythe. He's convinced his lawyer, he's convinced his doctor that he's an upset kid and didn't know what he was doing when he ran over my sister-in-law. Huh? So you got one of them, huh? Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you're talking about working up a good, solid case and then watching some smart lawyer get it thrown out of court. That's what I'm talking about. I've had those. Listen, almost every cop in the whole force has. It's murder. So what do you do about it? Me? I go to the gym. I work out my frustrations on the punching bag. What do you really do about it? I'm telling you, that's what I do. Look, some cops, they go home, they yell at the wife, they yell at the kids, they, they kick the dog. Others, they head for a bar. Now, some of us, we uh, grow up. In my case, that may never happen. 
Look, it's just the justice system. You got to get used to that. It's innocent till proven guilty. We're talking about the man who killed my sister-in-law, Captain. No, no, no. We're talking about the system. You're part of it. I'm part of it. And Corey Blythe is part of it. I wonder who the prosecutor's going to be. No idea. I just pray they don't send us some wimp. No one has ever called me that before. Kate Rosner, assistant district attorney. Friday, did you hear somebody come in? Yes, doctor, Mr. Meyer is here. Hi, Hello, Jake. I was told you'd be here today. Can I get you anything? No, thank you, not for me. Uh, maybe we should talk about this in the other room. This is fine with me. Thanks, Friday. Sit down. What's on your mind? It's very difficult for me, Tony. Wait a second. Um, before we talk, I want to tell you that I'm so happy that you and Bobby are going to adopt Lucy's baby. How did you find that out? She told me. We're all very happy about it, of course, but... And what I think it's great for everyone. Thanks. Now, your business. Yeah, my business. Tony, Corey Blythe's preliminary hearing is at the end of the week. I plan to call you as a defense witness. You're not serious. I am, Tony. I Jake, am serious. for God's sake. Tony, I know how you must you feel You don't about know this. how I feel about it. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing, and then that's the end of this discussion. Maybe you're defending him. I'm not going to be a defense witness. Not for somebody that... No, no. Tony, 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 this boy may have a legitimate defense here. Are you saying that he could get out of this? If he was not truly not responsible for his actions when he was behind the wheel of Jake, that car. Jake, you're saying he could get out of this, and I'm not going to help him out. You know, I operated on the kid. I saved his life, and I have fulfilled my oath as a doctor. And that oath stops when I leave that hospital door. And how could you come in here and ask me something Tony, like this? Tony, your patient was a human being. My client is a human being. Your client took my wife's life. Does it take an oath to do the right thing? Is that what it takes, Tony, an Jake, oath? He killed Tanya. He killed her. He killed her. He's... You know, he's not my patient anymore. He's yours, and I'm having nothing to do with this. Tony, I don't believe that from you, not for a minute. It's too easy now. What do you mean easy? Nothing is easy for you me right now. You operated on him. You saved his life so your conscience is clear. But you want me to throw him to the wolves. Well, damn it, I have a conscience too. And an oath to defend that boy as best I can. And I think Tanya would approve. And that's a low blow, and that's it. Tony, just think about it, please. Just think about it. Forget it. Thought I heard voices. Oh, well, we were just talking for a while. And I thought you had left. Tony, I have to ask you once more. Save your breath. Please, just think about it. I don't need to. I've done all I can do for this killer. Good work. Is it enough to put this kid away for a while? Yeah. Enough. And I agree with your recommendation that he should be tried as an adult charged with felony hit and run. I'm glad about that. Still worried about a wimp from the district attorney's office? <laughs> no, I'm not. Tell me, though, if he is convicted, what kind of sentence is he facing? One to four years in the state pen. That's not enough. But I hope he gets it. Listen, do you know who you're going up against here? Well, I heard Jake Meyer. That's right. Have you ever prosecuted a case that he was defending? No. He's tough. I know. I've watched him in court a couple of times. But he has an Achilles heel. Really? What might that be? He's got a bleeding heart. I think the jury will feel he's gone too far in his defense of a hit-and-run driver, resulting in the death of a lovely young woman, wife and mother. Well, she was that. 
I'm going to make Jake feel as though he's trying to defend John Wilkes Booth. You know something? What? Mr. Meyer just may have his hands full. Felicia, hello, my honey, hello, my baby, hello, my ragtime gal. Send me a kiss by wire, baby, my heart's on fire. Hello, my baby, where the hell are you? Hello, my honey, hello, my... Here I am, lover. <laughs> well, it took you long enough to get here. Well, I was just about ready to take a shower and myself up for my man. Oh, you look so good. Well, I'm supposed to. It's so nice to be back in our own place. <laughs> All I can say is I'm glad that I have the wonderful idea of moving back here. All I can say is that I think you are a genius. Well, it's so you. nice to be here and to relax after taking care of the baby all that time. Enjoy, my dear, enjoy. You know, I really miss taking care of Barbara Jean. I'll have to go back and see her. Well, you will anytime you want. You'll see her. Did I tell you that I talked to the assistant DA today? About the hit and run case? Uh-huh. What's he like? She is a powerhouse, a dynamo. She's going to crush this kid in a second. Mm, sounds like a strong one. All I can say is I'm glad that she's on my side. Me too. Are you hungry? Oh, baby. Starving. I was heating up the casserole that we had for dinner. <laughs> casserole. Pizza. Let's go out and get some pizza. Oh, okay, you've got it. Don't argue now. Hmm? How about a shower first? Together? So you play your cards? Well, right? okay, okay. You forced me. I forced you? Force me. Force me. Please. Force me. Oh, I think it's Bobby, I'm defending Corey Blythe. The only thing that I'm not crazy about is the head of lettuce. Did you hear what I said? I heard you. You're defending Corey. Aren't you going to give me a hard time? Nope. You know what they say about not learning from your past mistakes. You have to repeat them. And I have made enough mistakes in that department. Wow. And we're still suffering from all the grief I gave you about Lucy Coe. Nope, that's one lesson I have learned. You never cease to amaze me. Oh, well, if that's a compliment, thanks. It's a compliment well deserved. Whatever decisions you make regarding your clients are your business. Good. Speaking of uh, Lucy Coe, mm -hmm. did you know that, uh, well, maybe I ought to get an agreement from you first. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? Well, she's staying with Tony. And, uh... I think we should get extra cheese and mushrooms. Pepperoni, honey, pepperoni, pepperoni. 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 It gives me heartburn. No, it doesn't give me heartburn. It does so. A little heartache. You two going out for pizza? Yeah, would you like to join us? Well, actually, that's not a bad idea. Jake? No, no, I don't think that's such a good idea. Oh, do you have other plans? Yeah. Lettuce. So, Jake. Yeah? Have you heard who you're going up against? Kate Rosner? Who? Well, I guess you haven't heard of her yet. She's the new assistant DA. I just hope that your client is emotionally stable enough to handle what goes on in court because she's going to give it to him. Frisco, I know how anxious you are that, uh, my client get punished, and I know how you would like to see that punishment go. There's a good reason why there's a separation between law enforcement and the judicial system. I just want you to know that she's going to go after him, and I'm behind her. Frisco. Just stay out of this, honey. How do you feel about that, huh, counselor? You feel good with your decision of defending him? Frisco, I'm trying to explain to you why I... Never mind. Let's go. Go? After the way you talk to Jake like that? Why are you making this into a personal battle with him? Don't be like this, all right? Let's just go to Dino's. I've lost my appetite. You think I'm wrong? Totally. Felicia, 
Alicia, please do not walk away from me like that. Will you talk to me? That's exactly what you need. But you have to listen to me. Now sit down. I know how hard Tanya's death was on you. And one of the reasons why you're such a good cop is that you have this need to make things, make things fit, to put all the pieces together. And I know how frustrated you get when you're in a situation that you can't complete. It's not to your satisfaction. That has nothing to do I with I am this. not finished, Frisco. What you are doing is you are taking that on everybody. You're losing your temper. You, you're, you're taking that on Jake and Bobby and me. Everybody you think is standing in your way. I'm not doing that. You are too, and instead of ending this nightmare, you're prolonging it and you're making it worse. Are you finished? More or less. Well, good. Because I'd like to say something. Finding Tanya's killer was my case. It was my responsibility. I know. And you did a good job. You found Corey. Now let go and let the court do the rest. I am letting it go. I'd like to believe that. I really would, but I just can't. There's nothing you can do about Tanya's death. She's gone. And even if the court sentenced Corey for the rest of his life in jail, that's not going to bring her back. That is not the point here. It is to you. Damn it, will you listen to me? Now, everybody is acting like this kid who is old enough to drive and who is sane enough to know right from wrong should be let off the hook because of some emotional problem. Well, that doesn't fly in my book. You know? I wasn't brought up that way. And don't tell me he's emotionally mixed up either. Because I know. I sat in his hospital room and I interrogated him. I know. So you want me to believe that if this case is, is just, uh, uh, just a usual case and whatever the court decides, you'll just go along with it? You know, me becoming a cop doesn't mean that I lost all my feelings. Now... When this hearing is over, whatever the decision is, you have my word that I'll drop it. Maybe your word isn't good enough anymore. Break your neck. That's dressing, it's all right? It's a salad. Too much garlic, I knew it. No! I knew it's too no. much garlic. I love garlic. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I don't mean to interrupt you here, but, um, I need a favor. Yeah, what can I do for you? Well, you could help me get my marriage straightened out. Felicia and I had a <clears throat> bit of a run-in. She had a little point to make, and, well, she was right. Well, I'm glad to hear you admit it. Well, I need to do more than that, Anna. Listen, I got some vacation time coming up. Two weeks. Yeah, you did. And, uh, I know it's short notice, but I'd really like to take it after the Blythe hearing's over. I just need to get the hell out of here and be with my wife and just try to get along, you know? Well, I will certainly try and pull a few strings. Thanks. Felicia's a lucky woman. Because I'm crazy about her? Yes, well, she's very lovable. Yeah, but she's that, and she's married to the man that she loves. Well, you're heading down the aisle pretty soon, aren't you? Hope so. Well, it sounds like it ought to be more certain than that. Well, you know, I mean, I, I thought it was. You know, we got a retraction from Mark Carlin, and we seem to nearly have all the money we need, but... Well, now all systems are go, then, huh? Not quite. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know whether I'm just being really foolish, but I feel like something is going to stop us from getting married. Finally, Dr. Aster isn't here. What about our assistant, Mr. Anderson? She's gone for the day. Just unlike the lab dog, please like to see for myself. I'll be glad to, but I'm positive she left. There's nobody in there. I guess the cleaning lady didn't show up. I don't understand it. I can't. I understand it perfectly. Somebody's looking for something. I want you to check and see if Miss Daniels is signed out and if uh, Dr. Rutland is signed out. Yes, sir.
I apologize. I'm sorry. I, sh I shouldn't have talked to Jake like that. And most importantly, I shouldn't take it out on you. I love you very much. I mean, you're my... You're my home. And... Without you, I'd be left out in the cold. No, I, um... Talk to... Anna. Well, things have been a little tough on us lately, and I don't want you really looking for a job right now. I'd like you to take a little time off. When I spoke with her, I mentioned I had a few weeks vacation coming up. <clears throat> so, um, I was thinking maybe we could get away together. A vacation? Where you want? You choose. Tropical paradise, moonlit nights, dancing under the stars, duty-free shopping. Plus, of course, you don't want to go with me. No, oh, no, I can go by myself. Cruise to exotic ports. Give me another chance. Mm -mm. Maybe. What's the least you can do? If you're so in love with me. Right? Can't live without me. Don't push your luck. <clears throat> Aren't you forgetting something? Hmm? Well, naturally. I want to express your thanks. Hmm? Oh, naturally. How could I be so rude? I must call Anna right away and Me thank her. Me first. Miss Daniels checked out some time ago. What about Rutledge? Hasn't checked out yet. Which means he's still in the building. Either that or he forgot to sign out. The condition he was in when I last saw him, he could he could have forgot his own name. What condition was that? Well, he was uh, kind of shaky, you know, a little sweaty, like maybe he was coming down with something. Right. Okay. Sean Donnelly here. Has Dr. Rutledge checked out yet? I see. All right, if you see him, you, uh, you keep him there. Contact me immediately.
something. What's False that alarm. You sure? Cleaning woman knocked into a door. Which floor? File room in the basement. I don't have anybody leave. Right. And I know this is the last night for our little fantasy honeymoon. But I promise you, this honeymoon's gonna last forever. I love you, Mrs. Joe. How could I forget? Oh, Sean transformed that penthouse so well, I felt like we were really there. Honey, I had to put a damper on your plans here, but flights to ancient Rome ended 2,000 years ago. I'm afraid we're not <laughs> going to make it this vacation. I think once is enough. You know, they say the Sanibel Island on the west coast of Florida is very, very beautiful. Mm-hmm. Sure is. Or we could just fly all the way down to the Keys. Let's talk about it later. You know, they say that Nassau in the West Indies would be really nice. What do you think about the Caribbean? Love it. And then there's the Barbados. Oh, just the sound of it, Barbados. It just sounds so, mm -hmm. so romantic, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fizzy rum drinks. Mm -hmm. I think I'm ready for it. I know I'm ready. <laughs> 